If you're happy with who you are, if you're happy with what you're doing, if you're living your life in kind of like in, in line with what your goals are, and you're confident in that and that you're doing that and you have healthy relationships, I think, I think that always shines through. Welcome everyone to the School of Greatness podcast. We've got the legendary Katrin David's daughter in the house. <laughs> Finally. I know, we've been trying to do this for what, two years? Probably. Two years. So long. Every time I say I'm about to come to California, I mean it every single time. You haven't been to California, I don't <laughs> think, in two Boston years. We're in Boston right now, yeah, I haven't. We're in Boston. I don't think I've been there since. The CrossFit Games. The in like Games in 2016. 2016. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so we've been talking since then, and mm -hmm. we're like, yeah, I'm going to be out there for like an event or a yeah. sponsor thing, or you never make it out. So I decided I'm coming out to Boston. We did it. Out. We're, here we're here in like Harvard <laughs> Square, and uh, I'm excited to be here because you've had an incredible journey. You're only 25. Mm -hmm. You've won two CrossFit games back to back. You've qualified for six games, five games. Um, 12, 13, 15, 16, 17, 18. Six games. Six games. You you qualified twice, and then you missed once. Yes. What was that like when you were qualifying, and you're just like, I'm going to get better every year, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, I don't qualify after a year of pain and struggle and training? Um, honestly, right now, I can look back and say that it's the best thing that ever happened to me. In the moment, it was the hardest thing that ever happened to me. Mm. Um, I think I, I kind of, I was born very competitive. And it didn't really matter what it was, whether it was, you know, swimming when we were in school or, you know, running around the playground, you know, with the boys. I was always in a competition. And I did gymnastics until I was 16. And I was kind of, I was never really good at gymnastics, but I think I loved the, the conditioning part and I loved the dedication. I trained four hours a day, six mm -hmm. days a week, and I, I liked that structure. And at 16, I kinda, I didn't wanna do it anymore, and I was trying to find something, you know, I was playing around with track, and I was playing around with, you know, I'd go to a Globo gym, and I was always missing that, like, you know, waking up in the morning and working hard towards something, and, you know, having a purpose. And in 2011, Annie wins the games. Mm -hmm. um, she's one of my best friends now, and she's from Iceland. Um, but that was all over the news, all over the media, and they were showing, you know, clips from the CrossFit Games and saying that she won that. And I remember my mom and my grandma was kind of lost that summer. I'd been doing like two years of kind of like back and forth of gymnastics and track. And um, you were in high like, school at the time. Yes. Yeah. And my mom, and my grandma, were like, why didn't you try that? And in my head. I feel like it was the day after that I went to the gym that she was at. Yeah, and I, I signed up for boot camp. I signed up for a CrossFit, and that was literally it. Wow. And right away from day one, you knew. Yeah, I think I'd been doing it for about three weeks when I remember talking to my mom, and I was like, I was like, Mom, I want to make it to regionals. Wow. Which is like the qualification process, or used to be, for the CrossFit Games. And that was probably in September, and then... Probably around the new year, I remember that goal kind of shifting to, I want to make it to the games. No way. That quick? Mm -hmm. That quick. And that's a little bit dangerous because I was so good right away. So that was 2012? This is, yeah, this is the end of 2011. Yeah. In 2012, yeah. I actually make it to the games. Your first year? My Within first like year six trying. six months yes. of training. And no one could do that today. I mean, the sport was so much younger, but I really, I, I progressed very fast and I got good right away. And when I say good, I actually think that's so dangerous because mm -hmm. I think I got kind of content, you know, it was good. I was a young one. I was the one that made it right to the games. And honestly, when I got to the games that year, I, I didn't really belong. I was very starstruck by everyone that was there. I didn't have a coach. I, I hadn't trained for that amount of volume. I didn't have the headspace to be there. And honestly, I didn't enjoy it at all. But I got to call myself a games athlete. And then again in... Would you play as top 30, right? It was somewhere 30... I might have been 30, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I have another year. 
of kind of doing the same thing. I, like I would show up every day and I would train and I love training. And then I was a full-time student and I was coaching and show up again 2013 and kind of just same story. Like, mm. like I'm good enough that I'm a games athlete and I get to call myself a games athlete all year. But as soon as I get to the games, it's a whole other level and a whole other playing field. And it's so many days and so many things to think about. And again, like I don't, I didn't really have a coach and again, no just, one came with you to support you like in coaching wise. Um, I had some people from my gym, but they weren't like, coaches of they weren't my coaches they were mm. very supportive and honest I couldn't have done it without them um, but they weren't we hadn't worked together and I didn't have the mindset and mm. I didn't have the preparation that needed for the games you didn't have a strategy mm -hmm. mentally yeah and that's kind of just like kept going like that until 2014 I didn't make the games and right in that moment of not making it to the games. I remember there was a there was a workout that had ten legless rope climbs in, and legless rope climbs were a weakness of mine. And there was it was that was the workout ten legless rope climbs. Wow. There was nowhere to hide, and for weeks leading up to it, I had been so nervous for that one workout. I was at that point in the best shape that I'd ever been in, and I had always made it to the games, but I was couldn't stop thinking about that workout. I was. That was the workout. I was like, it could throw me out. Like, maybe wow. I won't make it to the games. And that was on day two of regionals of three days. And day one, I was crushing it. I was in first by so far. And I remember I was, they were asking me, and he was like, wow, like, you've improved so much. Like, how do you feel about this workout? And I, I could never be happy with what I was doing because I was so nervous about that workout. I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, happy with that, but I really just got to get to that rope climb workout. Wow. Like, so crazy that I, I couldn't just be in the moment. And I was constantly, like, I don't know, like, projecting forward to that one and, and my potential failure in that one. And sure enough, we get to that workout, and I think I was on my seventh one when I fail a rope climb. And I immediately start crying. I'm so, I bawl my eyes out, and I'm on the field, and there's minutes left on the clock, and... I didn't make a single rope climb more. And it did throw me out. And it's it's kind of like I was right, you know? What you say, yeah. you created, yeah. I, I think I created that for myself. And it wasn't my, it wasn't my physical ability because I was fit enough that year. It was my lack of mental toughness mm. that year. And I was just projecting forward that I could possibly not make the games and then, if, Instead of getting, <clears throat> we fail rope climbs all the time. Right, just you know? get back up. You fail lifts, you fail rope climbs. You just, you stand back up and you, you try again. So you tried again or you just like I did try again, trying? but I was just falling down the rope and, you know, I wasn't collected and. You could have taken, you know, more time of rest. You could, yes. you still had tons of time. And I was just rushing it and because I was so like, I needed to make that rope climb instead of resting until I was ready. Like I was just jumping back up and failing and, um. And in that moment, that was, I had nothing planned that summer. All I wanted to do was train for the games. And um, so I, he wasn't my coach at the time, but I'd done training camps with Ben Bergeron, who is now my coach. And I remember getting a text from him. So every morning, um, after probably like a week or two, I would wake up in complete shock, like, you know when you're just like, oh, like after, did, after you didn't yeah, qualify. Yeah, like did that actually happen? Like, wow. And a couple days later I get that like, text from Ben being like, I know that this is tough for you right now and you might not see this in this right moment, but this could be the best thing that ever happened to you. Wow. And I remember that I was so mad that he would say that. Like, why would he say that to me? You know, like, does he not understand? That, like, this was so hard for me right there and then. That was all I wanted. And that was my biggest goal, was to make it to the games. And that summer, I remember I took some time off, and I went with my dad and my siblings to Morocco. And when I came back, I hated the fact that everyone else was training for the games and had that purpose, mm -hmm. and I was just going to the gym. So I kind of like, I think I just kind of tricked myself in my brain that 
I was training for the games and wow. I that summer was probably the summer that I started training so much more with Annie so she was training for the games so we were essentially training with her for the games yes so wow. I was you know the best workout buddy that she could have at that pushing time because I would push like her and push so her and push her <laughs> yes but that at the same time workout. yeah but I wasn't like <laughs> I don't know I guess like for her she was training to win the games so for me I'm actually training for the games too and pushing with her so that kind of she really pulled me through that summer wow. and at the same time as I got to push her and that year I remember I didn't really watch the games um, I remember watching the final workout and it was really late in Iceland because of the time change and I remember watching it and the final was done and I remember just closing my computer going to bed and I wake up the morning after, it was like a million pounds were lifted off my chest. I felt like such a clean slate. It was like no one had made it to the games. And honestly, in that moment, I think it was such an advantage for me because everyone else had just finished the games and have to recover. You and to recover. Yeah, and here I am fired up and fresh. Wow. So, and focused. That, focused. And there are so many things that kind of clicked that year that I think I always think things happen for a reason. You are where you're supposed to be for a reason. And I was supposed to go through that. And then I I never read, I never really liked reading. I, I just have a tough time <laughs> like sit, I, I need to be doing things. And But that summer when I went to Morocco was the first time I really picked up a book. And I remember picking up um, Michael Johnson's book. It's called Gold Rush. Mm. and. He was the absolute favorite for the 90, like leading up to the 92 games, he had won every single race that he ever entered in 100 and 200. And he has these chapters in the books where he describes um, a 100 meter race. And it takes less than 10 seconds mm -hmm. for him, or about 10 seconds, but this could be a whole chapter of him describing what he's feeling when he, like, when he, he's on the starting mat, or his, what do you call this, starting, starting line. Blocks, yeah. And then he describe it like what's going through his mind and what he's thinking like right before the gun comes off and then it's his reaction and then like the whole, the whole dry phase where you're like yeah. where he's literally like facing down and he'd be like after like 40 to 60 meters he starts like you know raising himself up and then he would always do like a right left and he would never see anyone because he was so far ahead and and he gets sick in the Olympics or right before and he ends up, it's, it's a terrible Olympics for him and he doesn't even make the finals. Mm. And, and the, what a failure for him in that moment when probably he, he himself knows that he can win. But instead of, I don't know, he, instead of giving up in that moment or thinking he's not good enough or what a failure, he comes back in 96, he wins gold in 100, 200, and he added 400. Crazy. And it's just crazy to think that, I don't know, I needed to read that story in that, in that mm. moment because it would be easy to, for me to think that I had failed or I was a failure or that I wasn't good enough or I'm not as good as those girls. But it just showed me that I would failed at those regionals and I wasn't as good as I needed to be in that moment. But it wasn't a destination, mm -hmm. you know. It was a point for me to pass through and I could use it. Um, and, and then I started reading some sports psychology and I started working a lot more with Ben. And he talks to me a lot about what I should be focusing on and what I should not be focusing on and what should be going through my head in workouts. Mm. And, um, and he, it was the, at the end of 2014 that I was training in Boston and I asked him to be my coach. And he was like, let's try it, let's try a month and we'll take it from there and did that and I remember the new year he was like okay I'll be your coach. Wow yeah. why did you come to Boston in the first place? Um, that's just kind of like a long story it was um, one of his athletes used to do some programming for me so before the 2013 games I came for a week and that's kind of like how I mm. met everyone mm -hmm. and then um, early 2014 one of his team athletes that um, they they won the games um, they've won the games before they've podiums I think one or two times um, he had a phenomenal team mm. and a couple of those individuals on the team one individual that year and I went and trained with her name was Rachel mm -hmm. and so I kind of went over there I was gonna go for you know just a week or two and train with them and I don't know there was something about 
training there that kept me wanting to come back for more. Like I say, like I'd always kind of just been good. So it was, I just kind of did the training and be like, yep, done that check. Yep, done that check. And I remember when I got to Boston, I'd never been in a place where there was a coach. Like I, I love being coached yeah. and I've been coached my whole life from gymnastics. What did you have in Iceland? Were there no coaches? No, it was more like you're taking class. And I'd never experienced having a coach in CrossFit. And when I come here and Ben kind of like has his whole team and some individuals and, you know, everyone would show up at 9 a.m. and they're all waiting to hear what he has to say, just like in gymnastics, you know, like I think I just love that. And they whenever he spoke, like everyone wanted to listen to what he had to say. And he honestly didn't say much. (laughs) <laughs> which I think taught me a lot because mm. he's not sh- out there shouting good job or you should do better or this or that. He would more, you know, I remember doing these hell sprints once and he'd be like, you know, it'd be like Jeff, 50, Kat, 54, Rachel, 57. And it was like, you're not getting a good job where you should be going faster. He's just giving me my time. and it's very and, neutral. Yeah. But it made me internalize. It made me be like, I know if I worked hard enough or not. I know if that 54 seconds, I know if it was my best or not. He doesn't have to tell me. And it really, it showed me, mm. I started paying attention to what really was my best. And I think I really learned what hard work was. What it, it's, there's a difference between working hard and, and working really mm. hard. Um, so those weeks, whenever I would come to Boston, I, I think I accidentally put myself into, into this like professional athlete bubble. Yeah. Because when I was in Iceland, I was a full-time student. I was a coach. I was trying to train. You, I have all of my friends and my family that you know, you're hanging out with, they're going out mm-hmm. for the lunch. But when I was in Boston, I would, um, I would stay with Ben and Heather. Heather is Ben's wife and, and their family. And I would go with Heather in the morning to the gym and I, we would work out and then I would have lunch and you know take a little break and then would work out again and I'd probably be done by like three or maybe like three or four but Ben never went back home until it was like 5 30. That's like when he leaves the mm-hmm. gym every day so I had all this time that you know I just had at the gym and I would read, I would do all this recovery stuff. I would, yeah, yeah, I would sit in the Normatex, I'd do muscle stem, wow. stretch, all these things that I ne- I'd never used the time to do before. So it was kind of like accidentally living this professional athlete yeah. life and all sleeping day. more and yeah, eating yeah. better and you know all these car rides and, and dinner time tape, like, talks with the, like, the Bergeron family. I learned so much. And you were like, I can't leave this. Yeah, so I have to be here full time. This is the way. Absolutely. And I think every time I left, I felt so much better that I just like it kept me wanting to come back for more. It sounds like that structure was what you really loved. Yeah. Because when you go back home, it was kind of like on your own time. You have a lot of different things, but it's not a core structure mm-hmm. with one focus. Absolutely. Where do you think you'd be if you qualified for the games that year? Wow. I don't know. I. Do you think we'd have won those last those two no, years back to back? No, no. I don't think I would have won the games. I think I needed to not make it to the games. I think it showed me how bad I not only how bad I wanted to be there and how much I was willing to work for it. Mm. And I think I really needed that because I think if that wouldn't have happened, I would have been content with what I was doing and qualifying. I qualifying with qualifying and I. I no, I'm I'm a hundred percent sure I would not have won the games if that wouldn't have happened. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. That's interesting. Where would I be? I'd probably be in school. I'd probably be Really? Yeah, I wanted to be a doctor. Still I, in Iceland. I used to love and I still do, I love learning and studying. It's just I don't have time for that right now with what I'm doing. And I know school will wait for me. Like school will always yeah. be there and I can always learn and study and I love reading now. Mm-hmm. But um but the sport doesn't wait for me and this is what I'm doing right now. Yeah. So I need to give it everything that I have. What do you think it takes to be the best in the world? Everything you got. If you don't if you're not giving it everything that you have, I always think this. 
I remember everyone, everyone likes balance, like talking about balance. So you need this and you need that and you have this in your life. And I always felt very conflicted because that's not what I wanted. And I remember Ben was having a presentation once and it's the first time I ever heard anyone say champions don't have balance. Mm. And I was like, he's right. If it's not right or wrong, it's, you know, for most people, it's probably the right thing to have balance. Right. But if you want to be the best in the world at something, you just can't. Because if you're spending, you know, if you're spending your time on something other than your craft or something that other than something that's not going to make you better, someone else is spending their time on getting better. Yeah. And I always think that someone else is going to be spending their time, so I better be doing it too. Wow. And there, there's a time and place for everything, like hanging out with your friends and getting your nails done. But that, that has to be the right time. And when you've already put in, all, when you've slept enough and you, when you've eaten the right things and when you've done your training, and then sometimes it's good to get that little bit of a break, but that has to be the right time. Yeah, I hear you. So that, yeah, it takes everything you got and a lot of hard work. Wow. Do you balance it ever? Do you take like a day off once every three months? Or yeah. How does that, yeah, 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 absolutely. Your coach would be, he'd be like, okay, today just rest. Has that ever happened? Yes, I have one day a week that I have a full rest day. Like I say, like you can only work as hard as you recover and all of that, but you better True. be doing everything of that 100%. But then there are times that you have. Um, for me, it's normally Sundays. Sundays are my day no that, workout. that I take completely off. Recovery, swimming, little jog Sometimes, here and there, a little yeah. three-miler, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I will. Like, I actually perform a lot better the day after if I move. Yeah, I like yeah. just getting some blood flow in, yeah. getting a light, but it has to be very light. It can't be, I'm not getting lactic. I'm not getting any extra soreness. My favorite thing I actually do is sit in the sauna. Mm. That's a great, that's Smart. my favorite recovery thing. It's very, it's like, a, it's like me time. I bring in a book and I sit in the sauna for like 30 minutes and it gets really hard. Like it's actually hard to sit in the sauna sometimes it's when hard. it gets really hot. You're yeah. Dying. You but I wanna... feel really good after. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. What's your biggest physical weakness right now that's holding you back from being the best at all times? So um, 2015, actually coming back from that year of not Qualifying. Not qualifying. We win the games. It's crazy. It's amazing. <laughs> that is crazy. It's crazy. But at the same time, when you look at the things that we did, it's not crazy. But it's just it's just crazy looking at it like that. Um, in 2016, repeating. And it's like, <laughs> when you know that you can win, and when you know what it takes, you want to win. Mm -hmm. And... I am ready to do whatever it takes, and I am ready to give it everything that I have and, and work as hard as I possibly can every single day. There is no better feeling than showing up at your competition and knowing that you, knowing you did everything you could. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what gives me confidence. It's not conf you never know that you're better than someone else or that you're gonna, you never know that you're gonna win or where you're gonna place. But if you know that you did everything that you could, you can stand there, you can be confident. And then you go out there and give it your best. And you know that you're gonna come out there and it's gonna be your best result. It's the worst when you know you didn't train enough. Exactly. And you're like, I could have done this differently, I should have done it more, but mm -hmm. I didn't. That's when you beat that yourself up. That is the absolute worst. Worst. So coming back in 2017, of course I want to win. And Back to back to hopefully back. Yeah. And I, I was tired in 2017, mentally tired. And I think I kind of lost my sense of why I do this and my purpose and my joy in the sport. And I think- Why were you tired from the, the emotional pressure you put on yourself? Yes, I think I was- Now I've got a three-peat, now everyone's yeah, looking I think, at Yeah, I, I had a lot of things. And in 2015, I truly fell in love with the sport and the process of, of just getting better and of working hard and every day would show up to the gym and I was learning so many new things. I was reading all about, you know, I, that's the year that I really um, kind of got what it meant to be the best version of yourself. It wasn't, 
when I used to compete, I used to constantly be on the leaderboard and the outcome would matter to me so much. But yeah. then like starting to read about sports psychology and Ben talking to me about like, I can only control a couple of things. Like I can't control an outcome. I can't control the weather. I can't control the judges. I can't control my competitors. But what I can control is my sleep, what I eat, my effort that I put into any kind of workout, my my mindset, my my outlook on, you know, a problem that's happening or whatever is in front of me at that time. And it's just like we were we just kind of like loved the process. Mm. We worked really hard. We got to the games and it was an advantage, but no one was looking at me. You know, you right. didn't have no the pressure. pressure. You didn't have people. Yeah, I didn't have people interviewing me, and and suddenly we we come out on top. Crazy. And because of that reason, I think people thought it it was a fluke. And I took that very personally because I knew what we had done, and we had worked so hard. So that whole year, I wanted to prove that it wasn't. Mm. And in. 2016 very suddenly my grandmother passed away mm. and she was my best friend and my rock and my my everything in this world she was a light um and that was that's definitely it's it just happened fast and um and that that year, I did everything for her, everything. And every training session, everything wow. that I did, I wanted to win for her. Wow, so you had and a deeper purpose. So I had a deeper purpose that year. So when I get to the 2016 games, it was really weird, but I honestly, like, I would come off the floor and I somehow, just like I would make a lift that I have no clue how I made or I would be like focusing on like it might be a five round thing and I remember like I would always pull through right at, at the right second and I'd somehow just like every time I got off the floor I was like I, I, <laughs> I never knew how I did it and wow. I would always just be like it's her wow. and right before the final event both of us had this necklace that um, it's actually my grandparents that gave it to me and um, her best friends gave it to her for her, it was either her 65th or 70th birthday, but the same necklace and she used to use it a lot. And when she passed away, I got a little protection angel and I put one on hers and one on mine mm. and hers is buried with her. Wow. So I always have this necklace with me and right before the final event, I. I took it out of my bag and I was wearing this high neck sports bra. So I was able to actually, so I tucked it in and I was wearing it for the final event. And it was a really, I was in the lead and, but this was a really hard workout for me. And this is probably one of the proudest competition moments that I've ever had because how easy is it to, it was pack boards and thrusters. Mm. And how easy is it to, like with the rope climbs, just go up before you're ready because you know, it's it's the win on the line but at the same I just took everything you know a moment at a time mm. and I'd do another pegboard when I was ready and I would do the thrusters when I was ready and wow. ac actually get my best result even though there was so much on the line but I remember I'd, I'd walk over the chalk bucket and I'd go over and the necklace would always fall out and I think it like kept reminding me like she's there with me wow. and that year I remember just holding the necklace it felt like an eternity before he announced who had won. Because you didn't know. Because I didn't win that last event, but then it was like, what's the point spread? You know, and I, I came out a couple points ahead. Wow. And I was like holding it, and I wanted it nothing more than to win for her. And I think I had that that year, and then that 2017 year, you've already done a back-to-back -back win, and I didn't know my purpose anymore. And I think that was... Your purpose was now pressure. It's like how to deal with the pressure and Not, how to overcome this pressure. Exactly. Yeah. And I think I just kind of wow. lost that a little bit. And I don't think I realized it 
until I was at the games and I never had one of those magical moments. Which I talk about, like when you come off, you know, like, whoa, like mm. I love competing. It's my favorite thing in the world. Like when I'm out there on the floor. And I didn't have that. And it was, it mm. wasn't until that Sunday morning after the games, I had one of those workouts. And, the, and I had that magical moment. After the games? No, it was, I was at, at, at right the at the end, yeah. but it was just too late. Too late. You know, and I, I didn't even podium. I took fifth of the games. And I know that's, that's a tremendous, that's very good. It was just not what I wanted and not what I'd worked so hard for. How it made you feel? Um, terrible. I, I think it took me such a long time to acknowledge that I wasn't happy with it and to acknowledge that I wanted to win the CrossFit Games and that I wasn't happy with that placement and honestly like the longest thing took me to acknowledge how I was feeling like I was that I that I I was missing the joy I was missing my spark I was missing my purpose all 2017 I don't I, this is all after the 2017 games mm -hmm. that I think I was kind of realizing these things and there was a moment in time where I was like you know do I love competing in this sport anymore? Like, wow. do I want to do this? It's like, I was like, why do I want to do this? You know? And um, I got this email from, there's a doctor at our gym who saw um, someone post this, that it was like his little cousin that she was 15 or 16. She posted this essay. Um, she was talking about how she had been very, She's very down, like very depressed. She, um, she would go to school and she would, you know, do enough to get by. And after school, she would go home and she would do nothing. She, um, and this one May, it was before Memorial Day, her aunt comes and she was so excited. It was like raving about this CrossFit exercise. And she's like, you know, wanted her to come with her to the gym, and she was like, fine, you know, whatever, he will go with her. And it was Murph, mm. which is like a mile mm. run, 100 um, push-ups, 100 pull-ups, 200 push-ups, 300 squats, and then another mile run. It's, it's a tremendously hard it's workout. Hard, yeah. It's long, and it's, it's grindy. And there was all these people, they all showed up to do this workout, and they're all working so hard like some of them until their hands are ripping and they're all sweaty and like, but they're all there doing it together and they all made her feel so welcome mm. and, and she decides that she wants to join this CrossFit gym. And she had been doing CrossFit for a couple of weeks when she then like starts looking at videos, she gets more interested and she watches the documentary um, Fittest on Earth. Mm -hmm. When you won, right? Yep. Mm. And she says she saw Captain David Sutter talk about being the best version of herself. Wow. And she was like, and something clicked with me. And she was like, and so I'd go to the gym and, you know, she couldn't do pull-ups and she'd start working on pull-ups until she could do one. And, you know, she had to work so hard and, you know, sometimes she would tear and she had to wait until her hands healed. And, and, you know, it's such an accomplishment when you work so hard towards something and you and you're able to do something that you previously didn't think that you could do. And she then took it from there and she like, I started working harder in school and, and mm. she would be like, <clears throat> and that to me, it's like, she, she now has, she's happier. She has a better life. And what if her friends see that and see how inspired she is and a better version of herself and inspire them to get better. And it was like an immediate flip in my head. I, that is probably the thing that means the most to me out, out of everything that I've ever received or anything that I've ever done or gotten, that someone could, I get to go to the gym every day and do what I love yeah. and work hard towards that. And I am lucky enough to be in a position that the CrossFit Games team and Mars and Heber, they, they want to tell my story. And you, you know, thank you for having me on mm -hmm. here, but I get to tell my story and I get to show what I love and how hard I, I work. And if that can inspire that girl, that one girl, and imagine who she goes on to inspire, I was like, that is my purpose. And that really, 
that's why I started working out hard again. It's really? like, I want to do it for that girl. I want to <coughs> do it for those people that need it, for the opportunity that I can then inspire someone else. So that's the mission now. So that was, my, yeah, it, it, it still that's is. That's the and purpose that's, now. And that's what I, and that was leading into my 2018 games or the season. And, yeah. and that's actually the season that I can honestly say that I've never worked harder in my wow. entire life. Yeah. Did you feel like you brought the joy back to and the passion and the, the love? Yeah, I do. I do. In a different way. It's, it's more, I feel like with anything, like when you start out in anything, there's always a lot of excitement yeah, and everything yeah. is fun. And, um, and it still is. It's like it was a <laughs> lot of hard work. Like this year, we did, I've never worked out so much in my life. And I was doing like two, so, three like, days. Like, yeah. Like a lot of them were three days and some of them would be like, you know, one of them might just be 90 minutes of just running or biking and it's just a lot of time to just sit in your head and I had to tell myself so many <coughs> times how much I wanted this and why I was doing this. So it's not always fun in games, but I will say in the, the big picture, this is the thing that I love the most wow. and I am so thankful for that I get to do every single day. You got to tell your coach to let you uh, listen to podcasts during those 90 minute bike rides. I do that. <laughs> you I do? do that. Thanks for getting me through good. this. Good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. So you got third this, this year at the games, mm -hmm. 2018. How did you feel? Again, right, that's why we were talking about this, because of my weakness. How did, you, how did you feel? I just started rambling on. Yeah, it's all yeah. good. So that was, anyway, yes. How did so you feel placing year? third and not being on the top, which you wanted, yes. but working harder than you've ever worked in your life? Mm -hmm. and, ha and having a deeper mission yeah. and a purpose. Mm -hmm. How did you feel? Because when you got fifth, you were unhappy, even though you were kind yeah. of faking like, okay, this is good, but not. How did you receive it? Very, very mixed feelings. And I still have those mixed feelings. Because yeah. my, I want to win the CrossFit Games. I want to come out on top. And I know what it feels like to come out on top. Yeah. Um, and I worked as hard as I could in this whole year and, and as hard as I ever have in my entire life. And that's, that's very scary to do that. Because if you do that, if you actually work as hard as you can and you still come up short. Oh, man. That's you have tough. no excuses. That's tough. I've, you have no excuses. And that's really tough. But at the same time, as like I woke up the morning after and my initial reaction, it's like, it's like it, there, it's done. There's nothing you can do about it, and I didn't win. It's like, element, like it's like. Ugh. And you knew you gave everything in every event. You're like. So it's it is, it is hard, and it's not what you want. But at the same time, I'm so proud of the work that I put in. Mm. I'm so thankful for how much my coach coaches me and teaches me every single day. My family, my friends, they're. They're so incredibly supportive. I, the amount of support, like Christmas, it's like I was late for Christmas dinner. My mom didn't even blink an eye. She was like, it's like I'm stressing, trying to like, you know, shower and get ready. And my mom was like, it's okay. Like she knows how hard I was working, why I was doing it. Yeah. You know, and it's like, it just means the world to me. And so it's like all of those things that I'm so thankful for, and I have to celebrate that I did take third. It's incredible. It's amazing. But at the same time, I want more. Yeah. So what's your uh, what's the big weakness then? The big weakness. Back to it. <laughs> it's um it's like raw strength and power output. Raw strength. Yeah, like. Don't you have raw like strength? I mean, your freaking legs are strong. Your arms I know. Are like I know. You would think, but when I say I have a weakness or strength, it's compared to my competitors. Yeah, okay. So I know I'm strong and I'm fit and all these things, but compared to my competitors, um, I'm not strong enough. Mm. And <clears throat> it's crazy to say that I want to be the best in the world and I want to win the CrossFit Games. And then I'm out there on the field and it's a, it was a CrossFit total. So we did a one rep max back squat, one rep max press, and then a one rep max deadlift. Yeah. And if you'd asked, even before the games, if you would have asked me, I mean, I just didn't expect it to show up, but we should be ready for anything. Mm -hmm. um, but if you would ask me what would be the worst things to, for, like, to show up for me, it'd yeah. be like, it'd be the one rep back squat and the one rep deadlift. Like, give me a 10 rep and I'm good. But the one rep, 
So I'm out there on the field and I'm not having a good time. And I'm <laughs> literally, and I try and be very <clears throat> in the moment mm. and engaging to what I'm doing. But I remember like literally in my head, I'm like, I'm never going to show up and have a weakness. I am never going to show up and not be able to play with the girls. I want my worst finishes to be 10th place, not 32nd, mm. you know? So right there and then I've decided that I am, I'm not going to show up and not be strong enough ever again. There's no reason that I can't be as strong as they can. Is this at the beginning of the event or at the end of the event? This is during. I knew, <coughs> In the middle I knew of it was coming. I knew it was coming. Yeah, yes, I knew, knew that. So. So now you've been training. So now I've been working so hard on my strength. There you go. Yeah. Okay. And we're getting stronger. That's good. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> What's the? Um, it sounds like over the last four years now, since with your coach, right? Mm -hmm. Four years, that you've been developing your mindset at an extremely high level of mm -hmm. of being less. Uh, being more neutral, you know, reactive, less reactive, less mm -hmm. hard on yourself, all these different things, and really just training and preparing the mind for, to win. Yeah. What is the element of your mind that you still need work on that would take you from here to a whole nother level? And the um, mindset training. I don't want to call it a weakness yeah. in your mind, but what's the thing that you I don't know. Improve? I'm constantly working on something, <clears throat> and I think it really depends on, you know, the the mood I'm in or what mm. I'm going through in that time or I mean, you're not a the robot? workout. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'd love to be. <laughs> um, no, but it's, I think it like fluctuates and something that I've realized that I used to be a lot better at and I think I got pulled away from is, is trusting. So there's a big picture process and trusting the process and every day just doing the little things over and over doing them right, knowing that you got better that day and trusting that you're on the right path. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like that process in the middle of a workout. You know, like if you're doing something that's five rounds, 10 rounds, and you're and everyone goes out so hot, like in the beginning and they're, and they're off, but you know, like, what is it? How are you going to do your best in that workout? How am I gonna get my best time? And it might not be go out really hard. It might just be like, get in at a good pace, mm -hmm. hold that pace and be able to like come through at the right time. Like I right. said, like like I did in 15 and 16. And I feel like sometimes I get so caught up in that I should be the best at this workout or should be so good in this and that you start competing with other competitors and then you might go out too hot and then I might crash and burn and someone else passed me at the end. And it, just like trusting the process and trusting my gut instinct and my pacing and yeah. kind of bringing it back in a little again and not being so much in like, because it really is, it's it's an individual sport. And no yeah. one is touching, it's not a contact <clears throat> sport. No one, no one's playing with you. No one's gonna tackle you. It's just, it's you and your lane, you know? I think, was it Einstein who said, comparison is the thief of joy? How and, true is that? Right, and so the more you compare to mm -hmm. everyone else's times or whatever it may be, mm -hmm. I think that's good to train maybe that way to be like, okay, yeah. I know I need to like chase this person and this person, but also just chasing your own best times and your own I, best. I do that a lot in my yeah. head. I, I put a competitor next yeah. to me to make sure that I'm pushing, pushing and pushing and pushing. But yeah, at the same time, you have to like, was it my best? And That's if it, it was, like high five That's and, and move on. And, and if you not, then best. you can like, all right, we got to change that. Yeah. What's the part of your daily routine that you love the most? My mornings. What's, in, what's involved in the morning? I don't know. I actually like <laughs> working out too, but. I'd say my mornings, I love a slow morning. Mm. And I probably said that because if I have a good morning, it sets my day up so good. But if you're rushed If I'm anxious, rushed, everything goes backwards. My day is, my day is like ruined. I'm kidding, but it, it's not, but kind of. It's harder, it's yeah. harder, yeah. It's like, it's weird if my morning starts weird. But I love just like, I try, I set an alarm like two hours before I have to be anywhere. And when I'm in like a great routine, and it was probably my favorite like this summer, like leading up to the games when every morning I would wake up and just make my coffee and then bring my coffee out and then just read a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just like have time Relaxed. to just, yeah, just sit and read. And then I would journal after. And whatever chapter I'd read about, I would try and pick something out of it that I thought applied or my favorite part of the book 
and I would write about it. Mm. And after I'd written about it, I would write down three things that I'm thankful for, mm. for that day. And I love starting my days thinking about, because there are so many things. Like sometimes you'd be on number three, and I can't pick what I want to put there, you know, because I have so many sure. things. And you're like, oh, like, what am I most thankful for or this? And after that, I would always write down like, you know, 30 days until the games. And that really got me to think, even though there's a month left or even if it's, you know, two months left, it's, it always seems like such a long time yeah. until I feel like you put down the actual days and you see how much every, like how much can happen in two months, like so many things. But then if you put down like 60 days and it's like, today is one of those days. And you realize how much every single day counts. Every day matters. Every day matters. And and I loved putting that down there and it showed me like how many days are left and and so much can happen, but this day matters so much. Yeah. And then at the end of that I would put down my own thoughts or how like I try and link like what I was reading to 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 something that mm. I would do that day. And it really got <coughs> me just in the right mindset and I love going into the day with that. That's great. And then I'd go make breakfast. Um, normally over breakfast, just because of the time change, I love calling my mom or my dad or my grandpa, my best friends. Like I'll try and FaceTime with someone in the yeah. morning, just talk a little bit, and then I'll go get ready and, and go to the gym. Crush and that's when I'm like, I'm yeah. ready for the You're day. You're ready. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm curious. I don't know if you've talked about this. Maybe you have. But do you think being, uh, you know, intimate, partnerships and relationships support someone's drive to becoming the best in the world or do you think that that can hold you back both i think it depends yeah. on the person yeah yeah like both people yeah you know i think if you're with the right person and if you look at um matt fraser and sammy for example i there's so like they're so good for each other and Matt is so focused mm -hmm. and so driven to be the best in the world. He's a machine. He is. And then machine. Sammy is, she loves taking care of all the little things uh -huh. and taking care of the food. And she's such a bubbly personality, but so on it at all times that I think they really, they're a very powerful couple. Mm -hmm. But then I also think like if you're dating someone that might not be the right or doesn't live in the same lifestyle, it's right. probably pulling you away. Right, right. So I think it's just a, it's a good mixture of both. And I think yeah. it, it, it really depends on who it is. Yeah. How do you feel about it personally? Um, I'm not dating anyone. And that's kind of like, I think that scares me a little bit. I think if I were dating someone, I think I'm scared that, that he would be pulling me away mm. from what I'm doing. Wow. Or if I'm not very excited, then I feel like it might not be the right thing for me to do but at the same time I'd be open for it and if it was the right person or someone that is living the right lifestyle it's like of course the option's always there yeah but I, I don't know have it's you been like, with someone in the last few years where you've been training full-time and been in a relationship too or like no, an extended I know, relationship no no I've dated someone in like my recovery period after <laughs> after the games when I have enough time for a couple months but then yeah nights, but then yeah. suddenly my focus all like goes in <laughs> yeah Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. hmm. All right, I won't go into that more. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just fascinated to see. I know like, everyone is so curious. It's, well, I think it's just like when you obsess I, I guess I over just something. Don't, yeah, I just don't have you, an answer. But well, when you obsess over something that much in a good way, mm -hmm. I think it's hard to to do it when this is like your time and your moment. And yeah. um, I was talking with another friend of mine, uh, Nick Simmons, who's an Olympian, um, 800 meter runner. American champion in the 800 and all these things. That's and a he, great event. And I he was like, you know, for six, seven years, he's like, I didn't have a relationship because I knew I wouldn't be able to give them the time. Mm. And I knew I needed to be selfish because this was my time. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure there's ways you can do both, you yeah. know, and you can have both and have mm -hmm. it all. But he knew with his personality type, yeah. he was like, I don't think I'd be, it wouldn't be fair because mm. I need to be selfish 100% of the time mm. and do what I want to train, recover. <laughs> like, unless yeah. someone's on board with that, it's yeah. not going to be fair. He's right. So, yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. What are your thoughts on body image, you know, and, and femininity? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean to you? Do you ever feel like, you know, you're this fierce competitor uh, in your industry, but then do you ever feel like, oh, maybe I'm not as feminine as what other people are? Absolutely. Or do you and ever feel insecure about that? Yeah. I think it's something that ever since I grew up, I was tall. 
And like five I, seven. Come on, it's not that. Tall. Okay, so I I know <laughs> I know, but I wanted to be a gymnast. Yeah, uh, so I, I was see. so tall. So you were tall in so the gymnast world. Yeah. I always wanted to be smaller. I always wanted to be skinnier. I always wanted to be lighter. You know, you, I look at pictures of myself when I was a kid, and I was so skinny. You know, I was taller, but I just wanted to be smaller, and I I, I think that's the way that I kind of grew up was always wanted to be something different and I wanted to have curly hair and I have straight hair and it's like it's all these little things and after starting CrossFit it's when you work really hard towards something and you know like I always had big shoulders or I had the big biceps or this or that and now it's like look at what they can do look at what my shoulders can do look at what my biceps can do like it's amazing what our bodies can do and I think if you look at it that way and you look at, you know, I have a six pack because I work out and that six pack can do this. And I don't know, I think it, it can make you more proud of the body mm. that you have. But of course, of course I struggle. I, I, I'm in different shapes, different times of the year. And of course I'd love to always just be shredded and, <laughs> and look like a Viking, you know, like I do at the <laughs> games. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to look like that and get stronger. And you just have to put things under perspective. And I think, I think we all struggle with it. But, but I think it's just cool that we all have these, these different body types. And I think you see it a lot at the games that, you know, that we're all, we're different heights. We yeah. have different shoulders and legs. But there are all these amazing bodies that can do all these things. And every single one of them beautiful. Mm. What's it mean to be a beautiful woman? I think I always go kind of go back to the to the confidence thing, you know. I think that always shines through. If you're if you're happy with who you are, if you're happy with what you're doing, if you're living your life and kind of like in in line with what your goals are, and you're confident in that and that you're doing that and you have healthy relationships, I think I think that always shines through. That's a great answer. Mm. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Great answer. And do you have a message for, for young girls or women who maybe don't believe in themselves or don't think they're pretty or don't think they're short enough or tall enough or whatever their insecurities are? Do you have a message for them? Something that I, I actually have this on as a bracelet. I'll show you. It's here. I love blue and has little uh -huh. gold sparkles in. Yeah. It's be the best me. Ooh, okay. I think there is only there's only one of each and every one of us. And like I've talked about a little, it's like you only have control over so many things. And we have control over ourselves and what we do and, and how we treat others and, and what we do and, and how we act. And I think if if in each and every moment we focus on becoming a better version of ourselves. I can always, I can be a better daughter. I can be a better friend. I can be a better athlete. And all these little things. If you, in each and every moment, we make the right choice to become a better version of ourselves. And in return, it's like, if you're being a better daughter and you're treating other people well, and you're getting better in your craft, and I, I think that can only push the world upwards. Mm, that's good. Mm. What's the greatest lesson your grandmother taught you? Mm. She was always the light in the room. She was, I think the biggest thing that I take away is how she made other people feel about themselves. She was always a light, how she presented herself. But the biggest thing is, and this is something that I really try and do, is things like, how she says good morning to someone that she doesn't know or when she'd meet someone in an elevator, it made them feel important. And they could leave that room or that little, you know, it might not be a big interaction, but they could leave it and they could feel good about themselves. Mm -hmm. And they could feel seen and feel important. And that's, I always want people to feel like I can give them, you know, the attention that they deserve. And that's something that I, I try and live by. Mm, that's great. And your coach, Ben, if, if there were three things that he says to you on a consistent basis, that if there's someone 
who just needs coaching in their life. Mm -hmm. They could be a CrossFitter, they could be a basketball player, they could just be anything in their life. Yeah. But there's three lessons that he shares with you on a consistent basis that mm -hmm. you would share with everyone else. What would be those principles that he that he constantly instills in you? That is a you? great question. I don't know how to put that into three things. Um, or even just two, one or two, yeah. No, I think there are way more. Yeah. <laughs> the top um, three things. The top three. To coach someone. It's <clears throat> um, it's focusing on the right things. You know, it's the it's probably the the you can't control others or the outcome, but you can control your sleep. Make sure you get enough. Sleep. That's like my number one That's recovery sleep thing. Is key. Sleep, like if for nothing else, just like get your eight, hopefully ten hours of sleep every night. Wow. Um, and it's your diet. It's you know, it's the effort that you put into what you're doing, whatever your craft is. Um, it's focusing on the right things, and I feel like when you do that and you focus on the things that you actually can control, I feel like your mind is like, it's like, it's like a windshield wiper. It's like, clear. you just see things clear, and you're not constantly like fussing about little things or getting aggravated. Like, if you can change it, just change it. And if you can't, then and move on, you know, and you're not, I don't know, it, it at least gets my mind so much clearer. I think yeah. number two is probably focusing on details. I think there are so many little things that you think are little things, you know, like that a little accessory thing at the end of your day that you could just skip or, you know, just having that one cookie. You can just have that one cookie or, mm. you know, watching White one more. Cookies. Yeah, <laughs> don't we all? And then, <clears throat> you know, watching one extra episode at night because mm. it's like it's only only one more but you're Gosh, losing that hour of, yeah you're losing that hour of sleep it's mm -hmm. you know it's washing your hands you know so that you don't get sick because mm -hmm. a sick day you know can set you back a couple days it's it's taking care of all the little details that seem so little in the time and they're like oh it's just one percent or one percent but they're really quick one percent add up really fast to yeah. something that's really big yeah and the third thing is um, relationships. It's developing great relationships around you. And I see that with the way that he treats his family and his friends and, and, and who he coaches. It's like you create a great life with the relationships yeah. that you create around you. Yeah. What's your greatest fear? Hmm. Losing the people I love. <laughs> Why is that? I think that's the only thing that I can't see anything good about. Hmm. Like I said, like not making the games, like anything terrible that happens, like I always believe that we are where we are for a reason. And I think it's gonna teach you something valuable or you're going through something because you can help someone else, you know, along the way. But um, when you lose someone that you love, <coughs> I don't see it. That's the only thing that I, I can mm. ever see anything good come out of. Well, we're all going to die, right? I know. I know. That's the challenge. Mm. <laughs> What's your vision for your life moving forward? In the games and then... Or with the sport of CrossFit mm -hmm. and then after CrossFit, whenever that I might have be. so many things that I want to do <coughs> that I sometimes feel like I will do nothing because I want to do everything. Oh, uh, yeah. So. I call that the passion dilemma. <laughs> you right? have so many passions yes. that you don't take action on any of them. It's terrible. Yeah. Um, so out of all the things that even now, like I'm constantly like, I want to do this, I want to do that. Like I, I want to write a book. I want to be, I want to work on TV. I want to do this, this, this. And you want to have like all these things that you want to do. And at the same time, I'm like, I have to realize that being an athlete doesn't wait for me. And all of these opportunities that I am so lucky that I, that I have are because the foundation is that I, I'm a good athlete and I want to be a great athlete. And I have to continue building mm -hmm. that right now. And, mm -hmm. and all the messages that I want to spread, the better athlete, the bigger platform I will have. So that's something that I tell myself every single day that that's, you know, what I'm doing right now, it will only, it will just give me bigger and better opportunities later to share mm -hmm. what I want to do. Yeah. So it, it, 
it helps me have patience with everything <laughs> that worst. I want to do. Yes. I don't have patience. <laughs> I know. I know like, I, I want it now. <laughs> yes. So. That's good. I think focus for now. For yes. Sure. But things that I really want to do is I'm writing a book and that mm -hmm. has, we talked about it a little earlier, but that yep. is a challenge. It is it's a challenge. Very, yeah. It's very challenging, but it's something that I really want to do. Um, I. Our whole community will support it when it's out. Buy a copy. Ah! I know it's exciting when it <laughs> whenever it will come out. <clears throat> Hopefully next year. Yeah. Hopefully early next year. Okay. Um, you have a title for it or no? Working title. I'm working with it. Okay. I have one, but I'm pretty sure that I'll change it. Mm. I don't know. We'll see it. I'll let you know. What's the thing you're most proud of in your life that maybe most people aren't aware of? Um. That's not winning the games. It's my work ethic. I'm very proud of that, and that's something that I get inspired by with other. I love hard work. I love seeing other people work hard, and I love working hard, whether that's in the gym, whether that's, you know, I, I worked very hard when I was in school. I worked really hard when I was in gymnastics, even though I was never a great gymnast. I was good on the conditioning side. So whatever it is that you're doing, whether you know, whether it's my book, whether it's working towards a future mm -hmm. career that mm -hmm. I want to do. Like, I just love hard work. Why do you love it? Because I think we can all do it. I think some people are smarter than other people. Some people have more talent. Some people are stronger. Some people are this or that. And it, But we can all work hard. And... I truly believe we can do anything we want in this world. I honestly believe that. Mm -hmm. But you got to be willing to do the hard work. It doesn't matter how good you are or, or not. If you put in the work and you put in enough of it, I think you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. It's interesting you say that because a friend of mine, <coughs> Jay Shetty, was giving a speech recently at, a, at an event that I was hosting and he was saying, you know, a lot of us are told a lie that we can do anything we want. <laughs> But he said, I'm going to probably butcher it, but he said, you can, you can be everything that you are. He said, you can't do anything you want, but you can be everything that you are. Huh. Something Wait, I don't lot, quite understand so it. So it's like, and I might be butchering it, but it's like, you know, I can't go be, I don't know, uh, a gymnast in the Olympics. Like, that's not going to happen for me. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just not. But I can be everything that I am. I can be everything my, my best self. Yeah. I can be that yeah. through hard work. Yes, absolutely. You know, so maybe you weren't going to be an Olympic gymnast. Yeah. Because you were too tall or because you didn't mm -hmm. have certain things, but you can be everything that you are, which is the greatest crossfitter. Hmm. Like once you find the thing that you can yeah. be, you can be everything that that mm -hmm. is. And I think that's that's inspiring. Yeah. To know that. But, yeah. Um, cuz I do believe we can we can do a lot of things. Mhm. Mm yeah, I think you're right. I think not like, everyone is going to make it to the NBA or yeah, like it. you say, you're like not. being. But you can be gymnast. the coach yes. of the team. You know, mm -hmm. you might have that. So you mm -hmm. can be in the passion, in the place you're supposed the to be. The thing that I think about that though is you prop you probably don't want to be an Olympic gymnast. No, if you I don't like care. gymnastics, probably doesn't make you feel good about yourself. No, if it's not something bad. that. <laughs> I know. If you're, I can't even do a cartwheel. I know. Feel so bad. it's like I think the things that you love, yes. and when you find something you love and you work hard towards, and you get you start getting better. I think it fuels you, and that's mm -hmm. when you want to become the best at something. Yeah. So I think it takes a lot of things to want that. So I think what you want will naturally kind of align with what you can be, exactly. what you are. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's kind of that's kind of how it works. Where do you think this came for you when you um, in your life where you said I love hard work? Hmm. When was this moment where you realized you loved it? And what triggered you to become obsessed with working hard? Was it something that your grandparents said, parents in school? What, what was the moment you were know. like, I obsess over this? I, I've honestly, it's not long ago since I was thinking about this. I was like, why am I like this? And mm -hmm. I've, I've been such, I've been so competitive since I was a tiny little kid. Did you get picked on? Did you get like... No, it was... And so I was asking my mom, I was like, where does this come from? And a part of it, so my mom was 16 years old when she had me. She wow. was very young. So I mean, she was pregnant when she was 15. And I think she got told a lot that she wasn't ready to be a mom and she couldn't do this. And so she was like, she had, 
she bought all the books, she read all the things. She was like, if I was supposed to know how to say, you know, five words when I was, you know, 10 months, I was going to know how to say 15. Wow. If I was supposed to be able to walk at nine months, I was going to do it at eight months. You so know, she so she pushed you. She, she's not a push, like, I, because I can't even remember this. She's not like a pushy, <clears throat> she never, I think she's very supportive. And I think it's like from her that I, she's very, um, and this might just be Icelandic females too, but like believe that we can do anything. Wow. And where does that come from? I don't know. So Iceland is a it's, country. It's like a mentality like... in Iceland, and it's it's my family, and it's. Got it. Um, I think I was just raised that way, okay. but and then a lot of things are, you know, my dad is very academic, and at the same time he's not like pushy either. But if he would, he's he's a teacher. Uh -huh. So there's ever anything that I didn't understand completely. He's like, oh, that's easy. Come here, I'll show you. Oh, that's cool. So it's like I always just like, I've had a lot of support, and I was I've always been such like a grandparent's little girl, yeah. and I would spend my summers with them, and I loved making them proud. I uh, loved showing them my report card and results, having yeah. my results and having tens. Like I was very <coughs> result based as a kid. Like yeah. I said, even starting CrossFit, I I wanted the results, and it's not the right things to focus on. I think you yeah. should really focus on your efforts. But at the same time, I think I realized that if I did study h harder, I would get a higher grade, and if I did do more conditioning, I would would be stronger and better at gymnastics. It's like I think I just I think because I I I I'm an oldest child. I probably I, I'm a people pleaser. I want to make people proud. I want <laughs> yeah. to make them happy. And I think yeah. I think early on I wanted to make everyone proud. I wanted to make them happy. I wanted to be good in this and that. And I think early on I realized that if I studied harder, I would get a better grade. Yeah. If I did this and I think it just like Snowballed, yeah. I think it snowballed like that, and in, in addition to me being very competitive, I enjoy competition. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's just something that I was born like with. Like to win, yeah. In, in addition to that, like, it's like, I want to be the best. Wow, okay. Yeah, so I think, it, that, I think that's how it, that's the, the way I am. I've got a, I love it. Uh, a couple final questions for you before I ask them. I'm curious, is there a question that you wish more people would ask you? Do you know what I love? I love a good conversation like this. I love where there's, you don't know where it's going or mm -hmm. where it's going to take you, but if you can be honest and have a great conversation, I think it takes you in places that, yeah. I think when someone has made up questions beforehand or if it's an interview yeah. and they're very like, if they know the questions they're going to ask before, I probably know them too. Right, right. You know? So is there a question you wish more people would uh, ask no, you? No, I normally just get, surprised by where a conversation goes and I'm yeah. like oh I, I like where this is going but no I, I, I normally I normally don't know yeah okay I was curious if you wanted me to ask you something that you've never been asked yeah, yeah. I, I'm actually gonna think about this I'll, yeah let me know later yeah we'll let you know later. <laughs> this question that I ask is for everyone at the end it's called the three truths I don't know if you've heard of it <laughs> I have and <laughs> so it's you do so know this funny question. <laughs> it's so funny when people get surprised by this I'm like do you even listen to right? this podcast but then last night I was over at Ben and Heather's and Heather <laughs> goes have you decided your have three you decided, truths? I was like, I would have been one of those people. It would have been like a lot of Dang. people are like that. They listen to it and then they don't think about it. It's all right. Uh -huh. uh, so you know, you know the question. It's it's uh, if this was the last day for you, <laughs> many years from now you got to pick the day. Mm -hmm. But we all die, you know. At least for now we do. Yeah. Unless we figure something out through science, and um, you've achieved everything, everything you want. You've won 50 times in the games. You've <laughs> done anything you wanted to do. You've written the books. You've been on TV, like all the stuff. You've had a family if you want to do that. Whatever it is, you've done it. Mm -hmm. um, but you've got to take it all with you. And no one gets access to your content anymore or your videos or your message. Just the memories, right? But you got to share three final lessons or truths that you would share with the world that this is all they would have access to. What would be your three truths? Number one, I did get. You to thought about this. I did get to think <laughs> about this. Um, the first thing would definitely be gratitude, uh -huh. and it's to be thankful for the people that you have around you, and what you have, and the opportunities that you have. And I try and be very thankful for, you know, everything, every day. You know, I remember what I have and. I am, I'm so incredibly thankful for the opportunities that I have and that I get to wake up every day and do what I love and work hard towards what it Pretty like. Pretty sweet. That is, that is amazing. And every day that, you know, 
Ben coaches me. Mm -hmm. He has so <coughs> many things on his plate, but yeah. he takes his time every day to coach me and my family being supportive. It's like, if everyone just take a little bit of time and be thankful for what they have, you can't not smile. You know, your day is better. I, some days are hard, I know that, but even in those hardest moments, you realize how many good things are around you. It makes yeah. any day so much better. Yeah. So number one, gratitude. Okay. Um, number two is hard work. It's work hard, because I really believe that we can achieve what we want to and with hard work. And I hope that everyone works extremely hard towards what they love. I know there are a lot of people that just work really hard eight to four, but it's, I hope it's towards what you love. And I think as soon as you love something, you, it, you do things better and you achieve more and, and anything is possible mm -hmm. with that hard work. Mm -hmm. And number three, it's, it's uh, surrounding yourself with great people because we really get to choose who we surround ourselves with. And I hope it's with people that really lift you up and support you <coughs> in what you're doing and inspire you and challenge you. You know, I hope it's people that really make you better and make, make you want to be better, you know? Yeah. And laugh a lot. That's it. I got four things and laugh. You, can you I do add a that? great job. Four yeah, things. you can. Thanks. You can. Laugh yes. a lot. I think laughter is the key to happiness. I think so If you're too. not smiling, if you're not joyful, how are you going to be like happy? And I think it brings a lot of peace to people's lives too. I think it's medicine. It is. Yes. It's healing. Yes. It's therapeutic. I'm glad you did that. You always, I love that you always smile at the end of an event. Or at, least, <laughs> at least the ones you do well. Most of them. The ones you do well. I wasn't <laughs> laughing after my deadlift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I love like in, all, in the two documentaries that I've seen, there's been, maybe there's been three documentaries of the fitness mm -hmm. the stuff, but both the ones that I saw, you're just like always smiling, you know, and I love that. It's you work hard and you're focused and then you're like, you know, you're happy, you're smiling. Uh, and, I, and I really appreciate that. It's really fun to watch. Thanks. I think a lot of people can just finish something and be so exhausted <clears throat> and have like a negative face on too. Yeah. But I think you bring this level of like joy and like proud, you're proud and so you yeah. smile. Which I think is cool. Oh, thanks. Um, <clears throat> how can we connect with you online? I know you're on Instagram. Where do you spend most of your time on social media? Instagram. That's Definitely. Your, that's your yeah, that's, drug of choice. Yeah. Okay. I think um, I've tried to, to do it all. I do my social media myself, and I, I do enjoy it. and yeah. I Because I, I want it to be me, and I just want it to be, <clears throat> you know, whatever I'm thinking that day, and, and just be authentic and true mm -hmm. to myself. And so what's your Instagram handle? It's Katrin Tanya. So K-A-T-R-I-N, and then T-A-N-J-A. -A. Okay. It's my, it's my middle name, too. Nice. I don't use it as much, but I use it all the time in Iceland. Um, and I've tried to do Facebook and Twitter, and I don't think I'm funny enough for Twitter. But Instagram is where it's at. Instagram is kind of like what I've settled with is is I love the most. And so yeah. instead of trying to do lots of things okay, I just want to focus on that one. Yeah, so if you're listening or if you're watching, make sure to take a you know a photo or, or send Katrin a, a message of what you enjoyed the most about this interview and tag her on Instagram stories so she can, <laughs> so she can get the feedback as well. Um, <clears throat> I want to acknowledge you for a moment, Katrin, because I love your spirit. Oh. I love your energy. I love your heart. I love your commitment to the people in your life, the level of passion you have for your coach, for your family, you know, for your, your grandmother, for all the people in your life is really inspiring mm. to see that you're not just in it for yourself or your dreams, but you're in it with the people around you. And that's really inspiring. I also want to acknowledge you because I don't think it's easy to be uh, a woman in general on social media, period. <laughs> with the comparison and the pressure and insecurities and anxiety that's happening mm. in the world right now. And I think you're doing an incredible job owning who you are, owning everything about you, um, you know, that you are different and that it's inspiring. And I don't feel like there's any insecurities about you when, mm. when I'm spending time with you, with your postings online. But I think they're, you're a great example because there's a lot of women or girls, young girls who are constantly insecure and comparing themselves to every other girl or woman. So I really acknowledge you for your beauty of who you are and owning all of it. It's inspiring. Thank you. And I also acknowledge you. I appreciate you, that a lot. Of course. And I also acknowledge you for your champion mind and the mindset because I think it's really hard to <clears throat> qualify for something 
and then fail and not do it, and then come back and win back to back. That's like <laughs> unheard of. Mm -hmm. And hard work can only get you so far, but the way that you think is evident to me that it's unbelievable because it's really hard <clears throat> and all those days of the games and all year long leading up to it to keep your minds in the right place. So whatever you're doing, <laughs> keep doing it. It's really inspiring. I'm going to walk out of here like a foot taller. <laughs> <you know? laughs> um, Thank you. Yeah, of course. Everyone, make sure you guys pre-order the book when it's out. Follow you on Instagram because we'll see when that's coming out and everything else that you're up to. Um, final question for you is what's your definition of greatness? My definition of greatness is, it's hard to put this into words, but it's when you're happy with what you've done. And if I think about this in terms of like when you've worked so hard and mm -hmm. you have no regrets, when you did everything that you possibly could and like you show up at game time and then you give it your best, and you know there were, that's your best. It was the best you possibly could. There wasn't something that you should have done, or you could have pushed harder here. And I think that applies to life, and I think that's when you know that, I guess we have to put it in the present, because I, I also don't want to say that you're then content and happy. Mm -hmm. I, I, I hope that we're always striving towards something better and towards becoming better. But I hope that in every moment of our lives, we can look back and know that we're doing our best and know that we're giving it everything that we have. And that to me is greatness.